Hey everyone, welcome back to another coaching call between Samara and I. This is actually coaching call number 11. You may see the old uh, PowerPoint from coaching call number 10 up there right now. Um, that's there because we're going to review some things. But today is the big site reveal. We are going to show the world, uh, at least everybody listening into these coaching calls, what the site is that Samara has been building for the past few months and look at the progress so far. So with that, let's go ahead and welcome Samara on. Samara, how you doing? And are you excited to finally reveal the site? Um, hey Spencer, I'm doing good. Um, I am excited, I'm nervous. It's a whole mix of emotions over here. Yeah, so I can, I can completely understand why. You probably are nervous about what people might think about your website, right? And uh, <laughs> and everything that goes along with sort of showing what you've been working on for a long time. Yes, so that's about it, it's pretty accurate. Yep, and so, I, you know, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, you know, it's really your website, you know, so I'm sort of helping here, but really this has been your baby for the past, how long has it been now? Um, you know, three months or so, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so, Let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we actually show the website, we are going to just briefly review where we've come from, what we've been up to. Uh, so our last call was coaching call number 10, which was talking about advanced link building strategies for your niche website. And uh, the assignments uh, that we gave you are listed right here. Um, so I had asked you in the ne your next article to make sure to link out to at least three other bloggers and websites and then send them an email letting them know. Did you do that and how did it go? Um, I did do that. Um, I've done that with a couple of articles. Um, so I reached out to those people. Um, some responded, um, which was nice. Um, some didn't. Um, one person published my article on her social media or shared it with her social media. Awesome. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, some people are just, you know, they just thank you and you know, they say come back and check out the rest of my stuff. And that's just nice. Also kind of to start a relationship, um, in that way with those people. Um, so I think that's also positive. Um, and it's just, it's nice because it's kind of like a lonely thing, right? Building this website. So it's nice to kind of reach out and make contact with other people um, with a purpose, right? Hey, I mentioned you in this blog post. Hey, I love your tutorial. Hey, you know. Um, so that's kind of fun. So yeah, so I linked out and I, I reached out. Yeah, no, that's good. And so you found that at least uh, one or a, a couple of people were responsive and, and thankful for that? A couple, yeah. A, a lot of people write back. I think like you mentioned, it's it's not that common maybe or people really appreciate it or it's nice to hear that someone likes your work or you know so people seemed um really receptive and you know one woman i emailed with like a couple times i and i started looking at her website and it looks really interesting and i think i could use you know more information from her so it's it's kind of cool actually yeah no it absolutely is i mean building a website should be more of a social experience than just you creating a website and hoping the world comes um, and so I do think that the more you reach out and the more you interact with the community that you're involved with, uh, the more attention that your site is going to uh, start to get. And so I think that's a practice that you should keep implementing through, uh, throughout the rest of the articles that you publish. Absolutely. So the next assignment was to sign up for HARO and respond to at least one query. Uh, how did that go? Um I signed up and I'm getting the Haro newsletters. Um, I did respond to one query that was very specifically in my niche, which is um, kind of surprising, um, but I did not hear back from them. They did not seem to be interested in my expertise, uh, but um, you know, I look at the list every day of, of the articles being published and as soon as there's something kind of interesting, then, then, then I'll reach out to them too. Uh, but that's kind of a cool possibility for okay. sure, the Haro. Sounds good. And then uh, the next assignment was review the links of at least one competitor and try to replicate a link. Were you able to do that at all? Um, well, I looked at the links of a whole bunch of doppelgangers um, and I was able to replicate in the sense that um, there was a lot of um, blog comments. Um, so I was able to replicate some of those blog comments. So I, I 
my understanding is that I should be should have replicated those links, correct? Yep, that's correct. Well, then yes, I did. Yep, very good. And so that's something that you can go through and even beyond perhaps, you know, blog comments, you can start to see what they're doing, you know, whether it's a guest post that they published or some other strategy that they use to get a link that perhaps you can get a similar link as well. So it is a good practice to, to keep following um, in the future as well. Okay. And then the bonus assignment to actually get a live link pointing to your site. Uh, sounds like you did because you left some blog comments and certainly at least got a link there. And uh, you got at least a couple of social shares. Um, yes. Did Do you happen to know if they mentioned you on their website as well or was it just social shares at I this point? I think it was just social shares. Okay. I think would they, would they tell you? I think they might tell you, right? They might. Uh, yeah. They don't always. So, okay. But that's okay. So you, you completed all the assignments. So good job. Have to uh, give the congrats where congrats is due. Uh, so you got through that. Um, and kind of going back here, let's see how well it will let me go back. Project overview. Um, we've gone through all these steps. And I'm just trying to think maybe... And we re reviewed this every single time. Um, let's, rather than draw it out any further, let's go ahead and reveal the site. And then we will kind of go back to some of these points. Maybe not all of them in depth, but we'll go back to some of these points, you know, like uh, the niche. Uh, research that you did and the keyword research that you did and look at specific examples now that um, well we have examples to share and live and ready for everybody to see so drum roll uh, drum roll are you ready to reveal this I'm ready I'm Let's gonna let it. you I'm gonna let you have the honors of revealing that and I will will pull the website up on the screen so everybody can see Okay. So take it away. The The floor is yours. Okay. Um, my website is called Tiny Fry. Tinyfry.com. And you're pulling it up? And is here it is. Yep. <laughs> Tinyfry.com. Got it pulled up. Okay. Um, so this is my website. Welcome. Um, this is a website, as you can see from the menu, um, revolving around kids, kids and babies, um, mainly because uh, this is what is most interesting to me at the moment. Um, I have a baby, um, so for sure uh, all this stuff and all these blogs in this space are really um, interesting to me. So I created my own. Right. Yep. Um, so here we cover toys, um, crafts, activities, and gear. Um, and this is I thought a little bit different than it's not a mommy blog, right? It's not me telling my story about changing diapers. It's not. It's not like that. It's a resource um, for you know not just parents, um, but also you know family members looking for gifts or people looking for toys. Um, teachers looking for crafts, I mean, all kinds of things, right? And these are just the areas that I'm covering now. I can, it's obviously a huge space and there's definitely room to grow and, and different things to kind of add to the website. So this is how I've started. Yep, absolutely. So, yep, there it is, tinyfry.com. I think you gave a really great summary of uh, why you picked that and why it's interesting to you and it makes a lot of sense. There's tons of areas that you can grow and, and move into as you see success there. Um, you know, now that it's live, I guess people can go to it and sort of navigate, but you can see, you know, the great menus uh, that you've created. And of course, we always get tons of questions, you know, what theme are you using and, you know, uh, those sorts of questions. Uh, this is just a Thrive theme, right? Uh, mm -hmm. that, that you've installed in one of their templates, basically. Yep. And uh, you've customized it, of course, a little bit, added your images here and um, have an opt-in box, which you're collecting emails already, which I think is fantastic. I uh, am. I'm very excited. I have people on my list who are not friends or relatives. So Nice. Very, very excited. 
but also I was panicked, right? Like now I have to create a newsletter. So um, it's interesting and exciting. But yeah, so I have my opt-in up there. So I'm excited about that. Um, and I haven't really um, made many changes to the the uh, the theme, right? Like I, I like everything about it. I like the font. I like the layout. Um, I originally started with a different theme. Um, I had a lot of articles and I just, I just, just didn't, I don't know, it didn't do anything for me. It didn't sit right with me. And I changed themes and I, I just, I really like this one. It's just, it seems clean. It's easy to follow. It's easy to look at. Um, I like everything about it. So I haven't really changed anything. Yep. I agree. I think it's a great theme. Um, it works well. And I just clicked on one of the articles so people can see you've got an opt-in box up at the top kind of like, called uh, Hello Bar, basically, or, or Headline Bar. Um, and uh, then, you know, you've got great, well-formatted articles here with uh, multimedia videos and images and, uh, you know, bullet points and um, all sorts of great things. Um, well-formatted, uh, lengthy articles, right? And, you know, this particular keyword is just one of the keywords, right? Um, best cabinet locks for baby proofing, right? Is uh, yep. the keyword that uh, you would be targeting in that particular article. So let's take a look at and, and explain the why a little bit, right? So when we started, we did some uh, general brainstorming uh, for uh, general market and niche ideas. And then we decided to, step two was then, okay, pick a niche through keyword sampling and site doppelgangers. So you were interested in kind of the baby niche because of course you have a baby and uh, it's something that you're very involved with. Uh, and then we did a ton of research into the market and maybe you can tell people about either the specific doppelgangers that you found or just generally speaking, kind of what you found when you were looking at, you know, when you did your keyword sampling and, and other sites in the niche. Hmm. Um, I found a lot of weakness in toys, right? So that seemed like um, an interesting kind of way to, to, to segment into this market. Um, it, you know, my first thought is that the baby market is totally saturated, right? Like what chance do I have of even like making a, making a space for myself, but maybe because it is so big, um, there is so much opportunity, right? So if you're going after these long tail keywords, then, you know, you have a chance of, you know, carving out just a tiny bit of this giant market. Yeah. Um, so I started with toys, right? There's a, a whole bunch of kind of weak sites. Um, I thought their articles were not very well written. Um, the sites were not very nice to look at. Um, you know, lots of space for improvement, right? So this is, this is how I approach the market um, originally with toys. And then also, you know, the baby stuff, you know, there are a lot of websites, but there are a lot of weak sites as well. And as I said, it's a huge market. So you might not be able to rank for best stroller, but you might rank for best side-by-side -side stroller for toddler and infant, right? Like that's a long tail keyword and there's people looking for it. And, you know, there's weak sites ranking for it. So, you know, um, that was kind of our, our plan. Yep. Absolutely. And I was just kind of showing one of the articles in the toys uh, niche that you ended up writing. And so absolutely, we agreed. We saw a lot of weakness there. And then the next step is we kind of then began the in-depth keyword research where you found lots and lots of low competition keywords. And as you mentioned, a lot of those you know were focused on sort of the uh, toy keywords to start, but you also found a lot in, well, these other areas uh, that you've already mentioned, you know, the, the crafts and um, you know sort of activities and games and those sorts of things um, so if it's okay I I'll just mention a couple of the keywords you know that you're targeting and it's very easy to see right people can just pull up the articles and see well you know best toys for an 18 month old um, boy is one of the keywords and of course within that there's gonna be best toys for an 18 month old um, or you know the full phrase uh, you know, uh, what else we got here? How to make a dream catcher for kids, how to make a worry doll, best convertible car seat for air travel. Um, you know, so just lots and lots of keywords that aren't necessarily focused just on baby gear, right? That a lot of, uh, other websites focus on, but have, uh, sort of 
a lot of different keywords and phrases that uh, you're targeting there. So yeah. that's the plan. also, um, I would say that, um, you know, I see in gifts and toys and baby gear, there's a lot of room for affiliate content. Um, but that's kind of mixed in with the crafts and activities and games because that's kind of more how to and informational. And so it's not all, you know, all articles trying to sell you stuff, right? There's like a mix on the, on the site. That's the plan, right? Still, yep. it's a work in progress. Right. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, okay, let's see here. So, yeah, we talked kind of about, you know, what problem is your site trying to solve? How will your site stand out? And that kind of helped you uh, develop uh, the voice and angle that you came at most of your articles with. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe this is a good time to sort of interject this, I was going to just ask, you know, we set a budget of $500 total for the project. Um, let's review some of the costs that you had. I mean, I know you spent some money getting this logo designed. Do you mind telling people how much you spent on the logo? No, that was, um, I'm going to say 45, 45 bucks. And where'd you get that done? I got that done on... Um, I'm going to say Upwork. Yeah, Upwork. Okay. So 45 bucks for the logo. And yep. what else have you spent money on? Um, well, the hosting on Bluehost. Right. Okay. Um, and I outsourced content. Um, and I spent, I'm going to say 200. Okay. 200. Um, and gosh, I don't think I spent anything else. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. I think that was about it. That's all. That's all that I spent so far. So about two hundred fifty bucks, and then if you add in the the Bluehost, you know, it's five bucks a month, right? So you've spent about fifteen bucks on that so much so far. Yep. Roughly. Yep. So less than three hundred bucks, um, and you've got a great looking site with lots of articles. About how much content do you happen to know? Um, roughly? I think I have twenty two, twenty three articles published so far. Okay. Yep. Very good. In retrospect, I think I skimped on um, the price of the content. I think I should have paid more to get better content. So that's a lesson I learned. I'm not that pleased with the content that um, that I got from my outsourcers, but um, live and learn, I guess. Right. So how much uh, how much did you spend per article and? Were they just too short or just the quality wasn't that great? I think the quality wasn't that great. I don't know because I didn't charge. I mean, I kind of charged like a bulk price. So whatever, $100 for X articles. And there's no kind of des like designated length, right? They just had to write about certain, um, certain number of products. And I just, it was very uninspired. Um, you know, it was just... I don't know. I wanted something great, and I got something kind of mediocre. Right. Um, and I, in retrospect, I should have. I kind of just put all my eggs in one basket. I was like, write, write me ten articles. When I should have kind of maybe tested them out before that. Right. It was after after I signed the the contract. Right. Uh, you're you're stuck with, with ten articles. But, right. You know, that's a, a a lesson I've learned in the process. No, that's a good point to bring up. I think that's a good lesson for everybody. Yeah. Um. So let's see here, domain, theme, logo, um, long-term content strategy, writing and publishing content, and monetization strategy. Let's again look at one of these articles to sh show exactly what you've been doing. You know, as far as content structure, I kind of went through that, you know, using lots of uh, multimedia and images and bullet points. As you can see with Thrive Themes, it makes it really easy to create these little widgets, if you will. Um, and then you've got these buttons um, that if people are interested in this particular, the KidCraft Waterfall Mountain train set, they can click this button right and that's going to take them over to amazon where they can buy that and of course that's an affiliate link right mm -hmm. and uh, uh question, um, here that i'm actually reformatting a lot of the articles because you know one of the things i did is i got all these texts and i kind of threw them up on the website and there's kind of no uniformity i didn't really know 
the colors to choose. I didn't know what format I wanted. I, I kind of just threw them all up there. And, and after like 15 or almost 20 articles, I'm kind of getting the hang of using WordPress, right? And I think I like this box. I like this button. I like this, you know, this kind of structure. And so now I'm going back and kind of reformatting all of my articles, which is taking a while. But, you know, it's giving the site more uniformity. Um, and right. I would say like as a tip, I mean, now I would think plan that out first, right? It sucks to have to go back and kind of do everything over again. Um, so I would kind of think about that, spend some time planning that out and, and organizing that in the beginning and not kind of once you're started. Right. Yep, absolutely. Because it's kind of uh, adds to the workload there if you have to go back and change button colors and that sort of thing. But yeah, I feel like it's probably not important from like an SEO standpoint, right? But like, you know, I want the site to look nice and I want it to look the same and I want cohesion and I want, you know, I want all these things for my site. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's good. I mean, that's the way to build out a, a good looking site for the long term uh, is to do exactly that. So, you know, um, I guess I shouldn't skip over this. So you've got affiliate links inserted. You've also got, um, you know, internal links. You're linking to other articles, you know perhaps on your own website and then um, external links. I think I saw a couple up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pointing to other websites. So these are all good best practices, right? Doing these outbound links, internal links, and then adding some affiliate links in there so you can actually make some money. Um, so good example of uh, an article done the way it should be done. Um, and let's see here. So the monetization strategy obviously is you're trying to sell uh, products off of Amazon as an affiliate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're also collecting email leads so that down the road, people will just keep coming back to your site more often every time you send them an email. Or you know you may eventually uh, decide to either sell your own product or sell other products as an affiliate, right? So once you have people on an email list, it just makes it so much easier to monetize them and uh, do that uh, to make money in other ways. So, uh, and then, I don't know that there's a whole lot else here, you know, getting noticed, outreach, PR, linkable assets. We kind of talked about that as far as, uh, you know, doing that outreach. You've had a little bit of success there, getting things shared on social media. Um, you actually found, I think, a good tool to get your social media posts up, right? You had mentioned the uh, Jetpack for WordPress. Yes, Jetpack, which like comes with WordPress. You just install it. Um, one of the first things I installed and apparently Jetpack has um, a function called publicize. And so right from your blog post, when you're ready to hit publish, um, it publishes your blog post on all your social media. So you just link it to your accounts and then there's kind of a box where you can write in a custom message and you hit publish and it's simultaneously published on your blog and then across social media. That's awesome. Yeah, I that wish was, I would have known that. I've never used the Jetpack for WordPress. I just uh, have always ignored it. So, um, you know, that would have saved us some time. So <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for the tip to everybody listening. So if you want to automatically publish all your posts across social media, uh, literally when you hit publish in WordPress, Jetpack can do that for you. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, let's see here. List building and paid traffic we haven't gotten to um, and that sort of thing uh, we haven't gotten to as well. So let's talk a little bit about um, success. I mean, not only have you built the website, I do think there is a little bit, bit of success here that is worth sharing. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm going to show the Google Analytics of the site yeah. so people can kind of see where we're at um, yeah. because literally we are just getting started and then a couple of other stats as well. Okay. So. Um, here is the Google Analytics for the website, uh, and you can see it was installed, you know, roughly the first week of March. March 7th is the first day that actually shows anything, so you probably installed it March 7th or 6th. And, um, you know, so it's been almost two months, something like that, uh, yep. since you installed WordPress. And over that time, you have had 168 different people which is important to realize, you know, a lot of times you look at these stats and it's like, oh, you know, there's four or five people a day, you know, and that's it, right? Some days, and then you have some peaks here. But 
overall, that I mean, that is 168 people that have come to your website, um, and it's brand new, right? So mm-hmm. I, that is a little taste of success. Your average session duration continues to increase to two minutes and 19 seconds, which isn't too bad. People are looking at over three and a half pages per session, which is actually really good. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so, so some good things happening there. Um, maybe you can tell us about this little spike here from April 28th. Um, you know, I, I think that was is that um, I published an article and I used um, a photo of my friend's son. And so I told her about it and she I think she shared it with everyone she's ever met or something like that. And I think <laughs> something like that. And it got shared um, all over on Facebook and and Twitter and stuff. And so I think that's I think that's what the spike is. OK. Yep. That makes sense. So nice yeah. spike there. Um yep. Let's look at the SEO traffic to see, I mean, at this point, we're just hoping to get some, right? So to hopefully we're showing up in Google, at least at all, right? So, and uh, this does show that organic search, we've gotten 33 visitors um, from, it doesn't necessarily say Google here, but uh, probably uh, mostly Google. Let's, that's in total. That's like from March seventh. Thirty three visitors since March seventh, or what, that number is correct. Like, okay, correct. Yep. So you've gotten two from Yahoo, one from Bing, and thirty from Google. Okay. So you're actually showing up in Yahoo and Bing, which is kind of cool. Um, and then of course you're in Google. Uh, so you are starting to show up for some of your uh, content. Of course, Google Analytics doesn't tell us any of the keywords because they don't do that anymore. Um, But we can go over to the search console and uh, start to see um, some of the things that you are showing up for. Is that okay if I show people that as well? Sure. All right, we're we're an open book here, right? Apparently. (laughs) So So, um, here we're looking at, I, I mean, everybody can see what you're probably showing up for by looking at your website anyways at this point so <laughs> so yeah um this is the search console just the last 28 days uh you can kind of see um that you are getting impressions and you're getting a couple of clicks here and there um and for people that don't know impressions are basically when you show up in google for something right so if somebody searches for best train table um you know, people scroll to the third page because you're in position 32, 33 at the moment. Uh, 147 people have seen that page on Google with your website on it, right? And so these are some of the keywords that you're uh, ranking for. Um, best train table, toddler train table, train sets for toddlers, um, ride on toys for eight-year-olds, sensory toys for toddlers with autism, and on and on and on. So. I've actually got uh, about 64 different keywords that you're at least showing up uh, for in Google right now, which I think is good. Um, that's kind of how a site starts, is you mm-hmm. first start showing up, right, in position 30 or 24 or 60. Uh, and then over time, as your site ages, these uh, articles just start to move up in the rankings and hopefully you start getting more and more traffic from not only these keywords but of course the additional keywords that you'll be ranking for either long tail keywords from the same articles or as you've written new articles you start ranking for uh, new keywords Uh, sort of do you have any comments or thoughts or questions on some of the stats uh, that you want to share with people that Um this, is, this list is interesting because I'm not even targeting all of these keywords. Right? Right. I'm ranking keywords that I'm not even targeting. That's cool. Such as, for an example? Like um, Thomas Wooden Railway Grow With Me Play Table, number four. Right. Yeah. So um, let's click on that. Does that take you? Oh, well, that takes you to the search results, of course. So um, do you remember what the article is called that uh, is that talks about the Thomas uh, 
I don't know because I have several articles about train sets, but I know it's not. It's definitely not like my main keyword. Right. I think it's the product that I talk about. Yeah. No, that's cool. Which um, that happens a lot, right? That's kind of the power of long tail keywords. Is mm-hmm. you know maybe this is just a subtitle, right, in one of your articles, and so you just happen to be showing up for that. That's that really is a good argument for the power of producing lots of content targeting lots of different keywords uh, because you start ranking for things that you weren't even necessarily targeting in your title but because you've written so much content you just start to rank for all these variations and sort of subtitles or you know one one time mentions in your articles and that sort of thing right that's kind of the power of long tail content very cool yeah Interesting. okay um, so, like, honestly, how bad is it? Is it really bad, or this is how everyone starts out? Oh, this is how. This is definitely how how everyone starts out. This is not bad at all. Um, you know, it takes. Uh, um, I think the sort of common, uh, not not necessarily common knowledge, but the sort of uh, agreed upon time frame that it takes for new websites to really start ranking for things is about six months. Um, okay. That's sort of just standard practice now. When you build a brand new website, you really shouldn't expect to get much traffic from Google at all for about six months. And okay. so it's been a couple of months really is all uh, for you at this point. I mean, I we did start the project sooner, but I don't know what the date is of when you actually published your first article, but it had to have been close to the end of, of February, I would think, right? Uh, yeah, I, I bought the domain in February, and I remember doing the keyword research in February. Um, and so, yeah, so it, you know, we installed Google Analytics kind of at the beginning, so it must have been towards the end of the month. Right, exactly, or even early March, right? So, so we could just say for ease of calculation, it's been exactly two months since you even created the website so yeah. it, it, i'm sure it feels like it's been a really long time and you look at it and it's like why am i not getting thousands of visitors a day you know right yes you put, <laughs> because you put in a ton of work but trust me this is how it goes for everybody this is very common uh again the rule of thumb is six months before you should start expecting to see much. So okay. I see very good early signs. Um, okay. I think these are great results for only having something live on the internet for two months uh, in total. So I think you're doing a great job. Thanks, Nancy. And not only that, so we've got the statistics and well, let me click on um, some other things here. Let's click on links to your website, see if we've actually got some links. So you do, you've got 10 total links. Oh my uh, God, I have 10 links. <laughs> Can you believe that? So I'm totally shocked, that's insane. Yeah, so you're you're in a blog directory. Okay. Uh, I don't know what AHA now is, but probably another directory. Okay. Uh, teachingmama.org, research parents, so these sound pretty relevant to me. Um, Some of these are blog comments I, I recognize. Them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, yeah. you've got, uh, well, it's it's eight total domains, but 10 total links. Um, so I, I think that's great. I think you're moving at a good pace here. I would be really worried if I saw hundreds of links up here. Um, that would seem like a lot in such a short period of time. So um, kind of how we talked about, just sort of keep sprinkling in the links, you know, every month. Um, and after six months, you're going to see quite a few more links showing up here on Google. And so people are linking to you. Yes, some of these are blog comments, but you're going to start to see other natural links that you didn't have any hand in creating, right? And maybe mm-hmm. you already do. Um, I, I don't know. Okay. So I think that's a good job. Um, and uh, just for the fun of it, we can also pull you up in Ahrefs. It's just more statistics that people can can check out. 
Um, I've already got it pulled up. It's showing uh, six backlinks. You know, their mm -hmm. index isn't quite showing everything that's in Google uh, yet. Um, and let's see what else we got. It shows anchor text, organic traffic, um, and then this one's kind of fun, organic keywords. Um, the numbers are kind of difficult to interpret, right? It says that you're showing up for 243 different keywords organically. Okay. Um, that may or may not be, you know, super accurate. I don't know. But the trend here that I see is really awesome and I think is accurate, right? You see this trend? You're yep. uh, significantly increasing the amount of keywords that you're showing up for in Google. And so as you continue to publish content and just sprinkle in those links and do your outreach, this trend line is just going to continue for you know the six months or hopefully forever if you keep working on it. And uh, you're gonna start seeing tons and tons more uh, keywords show up in Google and, and start getting more traffic. Excellent. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that trend. It sounds good to me. Yeah, I agree. So I'll let you break the news on actual affiliate earnings. What happened? Um, well, the news is I got my first sale. Boom. Affiliate. Yep. Very, very exciting. Um, and so I have earned officially, so the site has earned officially one dollar and eleven cents. <laughs> awesome dollar menu, baby. Yep. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's pretty exciting. That is exciting. Um, so somebody's actually clicked through from your website, purchased a product on Amazon, and you got paid. Yep. Not a family or, or not family or friends. So yeah, that's, it's all very, very exciting. I was, I could not sleep that, that evening. I did not <laughs> sleep. Um, so it's all, it's all, it's all going to go straight skyrocket from here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's huge. That kind of proves out the process, right? Is that, you know, you've put a ton of work into the website. Somebody has come to your website and you've actually earned some money. So, it kind of, I don't know, in my mind, it, it proves out the process that this works. This strategy, you know, can actually earn money. And this is the very, very beginning, and it's going to take a lot more work to continue to grow the site and grow the traffic and then grow the earnings, but the process works, right? Is that kind of how you feel too? I do feel that way, yes. Yep. Yeah, good. Very, very funny. It's validating, right? It feels, it feels good. I hope so, yeah. So congrats on your first dollar earnings uh, you. from the website. That's huge. And um, I don't know. I We've kind of revealed everything that we have to reveal at this point. It, we've shown the site. We've shown all the stats. Um, what's the plans moving forward? Um, the plans. Uh, well, content, content, content. So, you know, I have my spreadsheet with about – a trazillion keywords that I'm, I'm getting ready to target. Yep. Um, so continue to write content. I'm trying to do kind of a daily thing. So I'm trying every day to kind of reach out to someone in the space and send them an email, not even, um, not even because I've mentioned them or just kind of trying to establish a relationship, um, with other people in the space. Um, so I'm trying to do one of those a day and I'm trying to post on social media, um, at least one thing every day um, to try to get more followers and to try to keep people's interest. Because originally I was just posting my articles and then right. I'm not publishing content fast enough and um, I think that's boring, right? So, and there's so much interesting stuff out there. Uh, so I've started, you know, obviously publishing other people's stuff um, so that my followers, if, if there are any, um, get to kind of keep their interest. So, you know, the content, um, social media, um, outreach, and backlinks, I guess, is the long-term strategy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's it's basically more of the same, right? I mean, we, we've kind of <laughs> gone through um, this whole process, and it's a huge learning curve to get to where you're at right now. But for the most part, it's 
just do more of the same, right? Exactly yeah. like you mentioned, more content. You still want to be targeting keywords and make sure you're producing great content. But yeah, continuing that outreach. And I, I like how you said it's not you're you're reaching out even if you didn't necessarily mention them in an article. You're you're truly trying to just be social about it, get to know people that are in the same industry and down the road hopefully build some friends. Um yeah. and uh, be able to mention each other and, and do other things together perhaps. Um, yes. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not all about, okay, I got to build a thousand links this week. It's just, you know, do uh, some small daily tasks, right? Reach out to one person, maybe po post one thing on social media and, uh, you know, write a little bit of content, right? You just do it um, sort of day in and day out and this thing's going to grow and uh, hopefully be huge someday. That's the plan. So, um, I also should mention, I mean, you have your social media accounts down here. I mean, on Facebook, I can see you've got 38 likes um, by just hovering over this. On Twitter, I don't know how many followers you have. Um, I think I looked at it and you had, I don't know, 30 or 40 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Twitter followers. and so, so, you do have people starting to follow you. Um, you're getting a little bit of traction. Um, and that's all a very, very good sign because if you can get people to follow you when your site is brand spanking new, it just becomes much easier when you have an older site with much more content and, you know, a lot more going on and, and you're going to get better and better as you go. Cool. Excellent. That's good to, that's good to hear. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I'm uh, very excited for what you've already done and then what's going to be happening uh, down the road. Um, but other than that, I don't think I have a whole lot to to go over during the call. Um, I'm just trying I to, that's I think yeah. that's about it. Unless you have any final questions um, or thoughts for anybody listening in. Um, that, let, let's do this little uh, exercise. Samara, if you were able to talk to yourself uh, two months ago or when you first started out, and you know you can kind of direct this to people that are just starting out, right? What would be mm -hmm. some of the advice or you know lessons that you've learned that you wish you knew uh, two or three months ago? Um, let's see. Uh, I would definitely say, and people say this, right? Pick a niche that interests you for sure. Um, Cause I'm interested in this stuff and even being interested in it for me, it's kind of, it's hard to write the content a and it's interesting to me. But when I originally made that list of potential niches, I had like ice sculpting on there and just a whole bunch of crazy stuff and said that I could definitely build a, a site around them. Right. So I think it's, it's really, really important for it to be something that you're at least remotely interested in because it's all consuming, right? You spend a lot of time writing your own stuff, reading about stuff, reading other people's stuff about your topic. Um, so it should be interesting to you. So I would say that is very important. Um, I would say don't get um, overwhelmed by WordPress, right? There's a huge learning curve, um, but once you're using it for a while, it does get a lot easier. You get the hang of it. There's a lot of great tutorials out there. Um, and for example, you know, we're using Thrive and the support is amazing, right? The support is super fantastic. Um, so if you have questions, those are answered pretty quickly. Um, so I would say, yeah, WordPress. And, you know, I think kind of get a schedule. There's a lot of moving parts, right? I want to look for keywords. I want to write the content. I want to do outreach. I want to look for backlinks. There's a lot of things to kind of do at the same time. And you kind of have to, I don't know, get organized about how you're going to do it a little bit each day or, you know, every Wednesday you do outreach, every Thursday you do content or every Friday you do keywords, right? It's just, it's kind of easy to feel kind of overwhelmed by everything you have to do. So um, I would say break it up into kind of bite-sized pieces. That would be my advice to my two-month younger self. <laughs> Perfect. Those are those are great tips, great advice. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. I think there's a lot of people listening in that will appreciate uh, those tips that you've shared. So thank you very much. Sure. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up uh, this call. 
And uh, the big site reveal has now happened. So everybody listening in, feel free to go over to tinyfry.com. You guys can check out the work that uh, Samara has been um, doing and all the effort that she's put into that to build that. And of course, we'll have a lot more follow-ups uh, down the road with additional earnings and traffic stats. And that is going to be a lot of the updates, just so you're aware, Samara, and for other people listening in, is uh, it's going to be a lot more updates at this point instead of learning new tactics per se we will do that um, as you know specific things maybe we'll do some list building tactics and other more advanced strategies but for yeah. the most part we're gonna be kind of reporting and saying you know we earned this much this month we got this much traffic and we think the reason is because of this right and, and hopefully have some lessons uh, that we can teach there down the road so mm -hmm. um, overall thanks everyone for listening in and Samara mostly thanks to you for all the work you've been putting in. Thank you, Spencer, for all the coaching and all the amazing expertise. Absolutely. No problem. So with that, <laughs> we'll wrap up the call. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you, Samara. Bye.